Through faith in Jesus Christ, we have been transferred from the realm of the flesh, yung tinatawag na in the flesh, into a new realm of the spirit, yung tinatawag na in the spirit or life in the spirit. This is the main change that has happened to us in Christ Jesus. Uh, and of course, this is from God. God is the one who transferred us from one domain to another which makes it possible ngayon for all other changes or transformations to happen in our lives. So yung paglipat natin into a new domain, into a new realm, makes it possible for us to really please God and obey His commandments, which nung dati nating kalagayan, when we were in the flesh, no, uh, we are not able to do no, because of sin. As we have studied, you know, sin prevents us from obeying the law. Instead, you know, in our sinful nature, we always end up disobeying the law. Kaya nga lagi tayong uh, failure when it comes to uh, our relationship with God. But now that we are in Christ Jesus, uh, something wonderful has happened. Tayo ngayon ay inilagay sa isang panibagong, kumbaga, administrasyon. And that, of course, is our life in the Spirit. So we need to know this and believe this and walk in this reality araw-araw for it has profound implications uh, to our whole being, yung buong nating pagkatao. So that's why it's so important for us to study this and to learn this. Now, yung Romans chapter 8, like I said, is central doon sa talagang discussion ni Paul, it's very important for us to study it carefully. And we have uh, started to do that, of course, <coughs> in the previous session. And now that we are continuing, let's uh, read Romans chapter 8, verse 9 to 17. No? Basahin natin yan, and uh, let's uh, reflect on it. Sabi sa verse 9, uh, you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. Uh, and if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bar bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, brothers, we have an obligation, but it is not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. Puri na Panginoon. Tayo po ay manalangin. Let's all pray and uh, ask God to uh, lead us and guide us uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit para maunawaan natin what all of this means. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much. Now, by your grace, we have been transferred from the realm of death to the realm of life. Wherein, Panginoon, in your presence, we are now able, Lord God, to experience your power and grace that transforms us, Lord, from glory to glory. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon, and I pray that all of us may truly appreciate and understand and live by this reality, by this truth, Lord God, that we are now in a different sphere and in a different administration of grace sa buhay namin. It is in the Spirit now that we are alive. So, Lord, tulungan nyo kami, dear God, dear God, I pray, 
and help us, O Lord, upang uh, sa ganun, Lord God, ay makapamuhay kami ng ayon sa katotohanan ng sinasabi mo sa iyong salita, upang sa ganun magkaroon kami ng victory, Lord, sa aming buhay. Thank you, Lord. Salamat po. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen. So, let us talk about itong topic na to, implications of being in the Spirit. Normally sa mga mananampalataya, if this is not clarified, no, ang tendency talaga is to somehow revert back to an old way of living our life, which is in the flesh actually. Kahit na tayo ay, for example, na born again na, uh, we have put our faith in Jesus. Pero without a clear teaching, ang nangyayari is we simply go back to the old way. We try to please God in the flesh. <coughs> By that, I mean, now uh, we ikanga revert back to trying to be a moral person or a good person by trying uh, hard, you know, to obey the Lord, to obey the commandments of God. Uh, and so, of course, that results in repeated failure. Uh, you may be uh, like that, or you may have experienced that, you know, yung sense of frustration mo sa sarili mo. Because you are not able to you can, uh, do what you know you should be doing as a Christian. Siguro naiinis ka sa sarili mo because you always fail, o kaya nakikita mo yung mga character traits sa uh, pagkatao mo that you know you should not be there anymore pero somehow nandun pa rin. So, the Christian life becomes a frustrating uh, experience for many of us if we don't understand the truth na we are about to talk about. So, itong implications of being in the Spirit is so crucial sa ating pagkaunawa and it's actually the reason why we practice spiritual disciplines then. Uh, often, if we do not understand it, yung spiritual disciplines becomes uh, another method no, uh, in the flesh of trying our best to become good people. So, what are the implications of being in the Spirit? Kailangan natin pag-usapan yan. What are the implications of being in the Spirit? Now, there are three implications. But what I'm going to do right now, instead of following the sequence, no, sa Romans 8, 9 to 17, uh, we'll start from the, you know, from the last part going up. So, ibahin natin yung sequence. Now, ang dahilan yan is so that we may be have a better understanding. Pero, siyempre, you know, the sequence of Paul is, uh, uh, you know, the right one. But in order for us to expound on it para mas maunawaan natin, I'll reverse the the sequence. And I'll start with uh, verses 15 to 17, which is this implication, no? Now, we have a past adoption. We have a past adoption. In other words, uh, once you come to Christ in faith, something is uh, true of you, no? Or becomes true of you. From then on, na kailangan maunawa mo na this uh, this experience changes everything as far as uh, you know your relationship with God is concerned. Nagkakaroon ka ng past adoption, you know. So what do I mean by that? Let's look. Let's look at verses 15 and 17. So we're starting starting from the end. So I so verse 15. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. Now, yung sa NIV, yung spirit is small letter S, but it should be capital S, okay? Which means you, the Holy Spirit. For you did not receive, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit you know, that makes you a slave again to fear. But you received the spirit of sonship. Uh, I think the NIV in trying to translate of the first spirit as letter S is to refer to simply some other kind of spirit. So that's why yung second uh, word na spirit is now capital S, which I think is also correct, no? 
uh, in fact, even better siguro. But you receive the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. And so something has happened, ika nga, sinasabi ni Paul sa atin. When we put our faith in Jesus Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit, which is the spirit of sonship. In other words, that is proof that we are a child of God. And by him, by the Holy Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. Yung Abba is of course a word for Jews na ang ibig sabihin ay tatay you know, or papa. Sa madaling salita, it is now uh, you know, possible to have an intimate relationship with God through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. And then he adds in verse 16, sabi niya, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So, dito makikita natin, uh, of course, you know, Paul is talking about yung pinaka uh, inward reality ng ating pagkatao, which is our spirit, small letter S, you know. And then the Holy Spirit, sabi niya, himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So, the Holy Spirit is the one that really gives us the assurance that we are no longer separated from God. We are no longer ikanga na doon sa labas ng kanyang pamilya. But we are now, you know, in God's family. And then sabi niya sa verse 17, Now if we are children, no, then we are heirs. Tayo ay tagapagmana. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. So in other words, we are now ikanga bahagi ng pamilya ng ating Panginoon. Kabilang na tayo sa kanyang household. And then Paul makes a, you know, uh, a qualification. Then sabi niya, if indeed we share in his sufferings, in order that we may also share in his glory. So referring to our identification with Christ, you know, which means na parte ng ating uh, pagiging uh, included sa family of God is also our experience no, of uh, suffering and Paul is going to clarify that uh, especially after you know, after this verse from verse 18 onwards hanggang matapos yung chapter 8 Kusan he is going to deal with the reality of our present sufferings in the world that we live in even though we are already children of God Kasi Paul uh, elsewhere talks about the reality na yung our true identity bilang children of God is hidden in Christ. It's not yet uh, ikanga manifested uh, in the in the real world right now. So we are ikanga bagamat yung identity natin ay nagbago na. Uh, we still live in a world kung saan nandoon pa rin yung sin and nandoon pa rin yung suffering and pain. So, hindi pa tayo nawawala doon sa realidad na yun. We continue to live our lives in the world, pero we are now children of God. So, this is a very important an implication sa ating pagkatao that we are no longer as we used to be. We have, ika nga, a past adoption. Okay? Tayo ay inadopt na ngayon into God's family. And this is important kasi in our day-to-day -day life, Sometimes we, you know, we uh, look at ourselves in reverse. Meaning to say, as we look at uh, our day-to-day -day life, at nakikita natin yung suffering natin, yung nakikita natin yung, uh, of course, even yung ating failures, spiritually speaking, we sometimes conclude na dahil yun yung karanasan natin, so therefore, yun din yung identity natin. And so that's why ang ending tuloy natin is constant defeat. Because it seems like sa ating uh, karanasan, it's like we are not yet there and so we are doing our very best to be there. In other words, kung, kung feeling natin na uh, failure tayo, so iniisip natin, we have to really try very hard, you know, uh, in order for us to really reach yung ini-aim natin na, uh, you know, sana mas mabait na tayo, sana mas mabuti na tayo para we would be deserving uh, of uh, you know being called God's children, pero 
this is important now uh, since we have now been transferred in the realm of the spirit and the spirit now lives within us we're not trying to become children of god we are children of god okay we now have the spirit of sonship at siguro ko include natin ang mga kababayan you know daughtership okay so we are we now have this ano yung seal no that proves that we are God's children. We belong to His family. And so, therefore, tagapagmana na tayo of everything that He has promised for us as God's children. So, this is the starting point. At ito inangyari sa atin, when we put our faith in Jesus, we have been transferred from that former state kung saan ang nagro-rule sa atin is sin and death. At inalis tayo ni Lord doon and put us into His family, into a new kind of realm. At ang pinaka-main characteristic nito is the presence of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Now, I hope na itong implication na ito sa atin would really sink deep sa puso natin. That this is really the starting point of everything na ginagawa natin sa buhay natin as a Christian. Because if, if as a Christian, what you're trying to do is you're doing your very best to become a good person, yung tinatawag nating moral development, then basically you're still living in the flesh. You're not living in the spirit. Sa madaling salita, you are trying your very best, katulad ng isang typical na hudyo, trying to obey the commandments of the Lord by your own effort, and siyempre, you will always fail. Because yung pagkaintindi mo sa sarili mo is that you are trying to deserve or you're trying to ikanga, get the approval of God by being a good person. Uh, one writer calls this the moral temptation. No? Kasi uh, obviously, sa pang-araw-araw mong buhay, nakikita mo yung failures mo, di ba? But uh, without the understanding of your new identity in Christ, yung failures na yun would become uh, the reason why you would continue to experience failures in your life. So this is the first implication. The second one is that we have a present obligation. Now, pabalik tayo. So let's look at 12 to 14. We have a present obligation. Sabi ni Paul, uh, therefore, brothers, we have an obligation. So meron tayong pananagutan. But it is not to the sinful nature, sabi niya or to the flesh, to live according to it. So, hindi na tayo obligado o parang kinakailangan pa na mamuhay katulad nung dati in the flesh. Now, please understand, pag sinabi natin in the flesh, uh, tulad ngayon, sinas nakalagay dito sa English translation, in the, uh, you know, not in the sinful nature, no, to live according to it. Uh, Please don't understand no, or misunderstand ito. Kasi yung flesh, dalawang, ano yan, dalawang manifestations yan. Una, of course, yung obviously, yung parang you're living a life of sin. I mean, that's very obvious that you are talagang living in the flesh. Kung halimbawa, ang buhay mo is characterized by, you know, uh, yung tinatawag na debauchery, yung pag-waste ng life mo, you know, uh, doing all kinds of sins, etc. That's typically nasa isip natin pag sinabing in the flesh. But there's another aspect of being in the flesh na hindi obvious. And that is being a morally good person. Uh, you know, by your own ability. You know, trying your best to, you know, read your Bible, be a good person, ganyan, praying. Uh, pero you're basically just relying on your own ability to do what is good and what is right. Uh, that is also in the flesh because in essence, you know, hindi ka naman nagre-realize sa uh, Panginoon, although maybe you're, you're going to say it by your by your words, pero in reality you are not, and the proof of that, that you are not relying uh, in the Spirit, is whenever you experience failure, which you will experience failure, siyempre. When you experience failure, malalaman mo na you are in the flesh kasi yung reaction mo, is the same as yung reaction ni Adam when he fell into sin. Kung maalala nyo, in Genesis chapter 3, when he disobeyed the Lord, the first thing na ginawa niya was he tried to cover up yung kanyang ano, nakedness. 
and then he tried to hide. Tapos eventually, when he was confronted by the Lord together with his wife Eve, you know, they tried to blame each other, to, they tried to blame other people. Eventually, they blamed the snake. Sa madaling salita, we cannot uh, be transparent and open before the Lord and admit our guilt Kasi ang purpose ng law is to show us that we are incapable of obeying God so that we can be led to Christ. But unfortunately, in many cases, we al we always end up, you know, living in the flesh rather than in the spirit. Now, sabi ni Paul sa verse 13, For if you live according to the flesh, okay, the sinful nature, we have to understand it, uh, you will die. In other words, what you will experience sa buhay mo is spiritual death or disconnection with God. It's not yung joy and peace na sinasabi sa Bible, but rather, it's going to be a constant cycle of frustration, you know? But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Now, the Spirit of God is going to work in you, and also in me, of course, to show us yung mga areas ng buhay natin where the Lord wants to rescue us and redeem us. But it will be by the initiative of the Holy Spirit. It's not by our human effort. The Holy Spirit will reveal to us areas of our false self na kailangan natin surrender sa Kanya. Uh, and, he, you know, the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to reveal to us yung mga bagay-bagay sa ating pagkatao that He wants us to surrender to Christ and trust Him so that, you know, we may experience uh, what it means to truly live. That's why sabi niya sa verse 14, because those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. In other words, ang Christian life ay hindi po yung parang uh, tuwing may makikita kang mali sa sarili mo, trying hard ka na ayusin yun, no? Now, the purpose of the Word of God is to show us those areas of our lives na hindi pa natatransform. Pero ang purpose nun is not to uh, parang make us feel guilty and then we will try hard. The purpose nun is for us to go to Christ and in Him and through Him to find the grace that we need for our transformation. So, we have a present obligation. Yun ang implication ito eh. That being in the Spirit right now means that we listen to the Holy Spirit. Uh, hindi sa ating flesh, hindi yung sa ating usual na tendency to try to solve our own problems. We go to Christ in prayer. And we wait upon the Lord to show us how we can uh, be transformed. In fact, uh, He is the one who transforms us. Uh, in the secret places of our hearts. Kaya nga mababasa natin sa scriptures that uh, the fruit of the Spirit, sabi nga yan, is love, joy, peace, kindness, etc. So, sa madaling salita, it is the Holy Spirit who produces those character traits that are ikang uh, like Christ or we become like Him through the transforming grace of the Spirit. So, Ito yung napakahalaga ang implication sa buhay natin. We are now living in a new kind of uh, administration. Hindi na katulad ng dati na trying hard tayo sa sarili natin. So first, we have a past adoption. Tayo ngayon ay children of God. Tapos ngayon, we have a present obligation. So we're moving pabalik dun sa passage natin. And now, and now let's talk about yung the last one. We have a future expectation. So ngayon, babalik tayo sa verse 9. We have a future expectation. Let's look at that. Sabi niyan sa verse 9. You, however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the spirit. Now, literally, sinasabi ni Paul, you are no longer in the flesh, but in the spirit. Okay? If the spirit of God lives in you. Now, yung if na yun, dahil sa amin na parang kinu-question niya yung realidad nito sa buhay ng mga mananampalataya. Instead, baliktad, ina-assure niya that since they have the Spirit of God, they are in the Spirit, okay? Because the Spirit lives in them, they are in the Spirit. And then he adds pa, and if, this, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. 
again, ang point niya rito is not to, to put doubt sa puso natin, meron ba tayong Holy Spirit or not. Hindi, ang point niya rito is you cannot really belong to Christ unless you have the Spirit. So, automatically, you know, uh, pag ikaw ay nanampalataya sa Panginoon, He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, of course, that is an experience na nararanasan natin during our conversion and yung experience na yun can be varied, hindi lang naman isang klase. Some people think na to receive the Spirit, kailangan you have to speak in tongues. Sometimes you do, sometimes not. Sometimes it's just a quiet confidence and assurance in your heart that you are accepted by God in Christ Jesus. Sometimes it's just joy and peace. So, may experience yun, totoo, pero hindi yun nakapeg sa isang klaseng experience. So, what Paul is saying is that if you are a Christian, the Holy Spirit now lives in you. No? And then he says in verse 10, but if, if Christ is in you, okay, your body is dead because of sin. No? Ano big sabihin nun? That means you are still living in this physical body. And because uh, this is a temporal body, it will die, no? Because of sin. That's part of uh, yung this side of heaven. So, we will still die physically. Pero sabi niya, yet your, your spirit is alive because of righteousness. Now, in, in the Greek, you know, in the Greek language, wala yung pronoun na your. Okay? At yung word na alive is, you know, not really an adjective but a noun, life. So, yet, spirit is life or gives life. Kaya nga yung bagong translation ng NIV uh, sa verse 10. Okay? Uh, nakalagay doon, you know, if I would read the new translation ngayon. But if Christ is in you, then even though your body is subject to death because of sin, the spirit gives life because of righteousness. So, that is the new translation. The spirit gives life. Sa madaling salita, what Paul is talking about here is the future, okay? Uh, you, since you have the Holy Spirit, even though you will die physically, there is a promise that the Spirit of God will give you life, no, on the last day. Kaya sabi niya sa verse 11, okay? And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ from the dead no, will also give life to your mortal mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. So, in other words, you have a future expectation. Meron tayong future expectation na because we are now living in the Spirit, the Spirit of God will, will be uh, the way for us to be resurrected in the last day and we will you know experience what the Lord Jesus experienced no when he rose again from the dead and so we have that promise as far as the future is concerned so sa madaling salita meron tayong assurance so unang una sa lahat ang implication ng being in the spirit is that we have a past adoption we are now children of God Pangalawa, we have a present obligation. No? Hindi na tayo dapat mamuhay katulad ng dati, relying on ourselves. And we have a future expectation. Alam natin, uh, one day in the future, even though we die, we will rise again. So, sa madaling salita, being in the spirit, spirit affects our whole being. It changes our entire orientation as a Christian. So ngayon, bilang follower ni Christ, I'm not trying to be a good person. I am already in Christ, and so therefore I am part of God's family, and you are too if you believe in the Lord Jesus. <coughs> and each day, ang obligation ko is not to rely on myself, but to rely on the Holy Spirit, to listen, to pay attention to His voice, to be led by the Spirit of God. And one day, even though I still suffer in this world because of the because of the presence of sin, 
And even though eventually, if the Lord Jesus doesn't return during my lifetime, I would die physically, pero I would live again. One day when the Lord Jesus returns, I will rise from the dead. At yan din ang assurance sa atin lahat. This is what we live for. And this is how we are to live our lives each day. At dito nang gagaling yung basihan ng lahat ng mga spiritual disciplines natin sa buhay. It is because of this reality that we are now in the spirit and no longer in the flesh. Yan ang implication nito para sa atin. Please meditate on this and consider this very carefully. Tayo po manalangin. Lord, maraming salamat po that we are no longer in the flesh trying our best to become acceptable to you. Instead, we are now in the Spirit. And in this new realm, Panginoon, we are accepted, we are children of God, we can now call you Abba, Father. And we can live our lives each day, Lord God, being led by the Spirit, no longer trusting in our own ability to be good people, but relying on you, Lord, who daily works in us to transform us. Salamat po. And though we suffer today with many things that are going on in this world because of sin, and even though we would die physically if you don't return in our lifetime, we know, Lord, that one day we will rise again because of the Spirit of God who is in us. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. Thanks be to God. Thank you for this good news, this gospel. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.